This is Duke University. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Yemi. And as a student of public policy, I'm really interested in the different things that the government can do, can really, in shaping the, you know, the direction of environmental protection in this country. And what I really wanted to focus now on is about the idea of renewable energy subsidies. Um, and I think that like, this is really the, the prime policy window for the things that um, could really help the renewable industry. Just because, you know, Keystone XL is hopefully on its last legs, but that doesn't mean that people will, like as long as there's oil, people are still gonna find different ways to try to transport it, right? So there's still a demand for oil in this country. And I just wanted to take a look at this idea of energy subsidies for these renewable forms and see whether or not um, the United States can change its policy in a way that will promote the growth of a green sector um, while stymieing the growth of non-renewables. So kind of when it comes to this idea of renewable subsidies, um, one of the really big statistics that we see is this idea that you know, the United States government spends this exorbitant amount of money on fossil fuel subsidies compared to um, renewables. And this uh, infographic from 2011 shows how in that year, the amount of money spent on fossil fuel subsidies was six times as much as that um, for renewable subsidies. And, but I just kind of want to like tease this statistic a little bit because when we take a really close look at that money um, that's really going into these different industries, we find that you know, per British thermal unit, which is just a unit of energy which describes the amount of energy required to cool or heat a pound of water by one degree, um, when you take a look at the actual money that's being spent relative to the amount of energy produced by either of these um, forms, we find that more money is actually going into renewables. And I think that's an interesting statistic to look at because it really raises the question is that why aren't these subsidies producing the kind of effects that we really want to see? Why isn't the green energy sector booming? And I think this is just an interesting idea that we see here because, you know, uh, global energy overall is still being fueled mostly by oil energy and it's really hard for the green energy sector to find its own niche in the economy and people think that the only way to really bring it into that niche is to just um, subsidize it. Um, but I'd like to you know, just take a look at the fact that when it comes to wind and solar energy, um, specifically these are two uh, forms of renewable energy that are actually growing like fairly rapidly and that kind of shows that there is that ingrained growth or potential for growth in these um, different forms because there is a demand for it and people are starting to realize the potential benefits over a long-term um, kind of perspective of using these forms of renewable energy. So if there really is demand for it, why do we feel the need to subsidize it so heavily? Um, I think what's interesting to look at is this idea that in terms of job creation, renewable energy has kind of a lot more potential. Um, just taking a look at you know, wind and solar energy, for example, um, the side of it is kind of cut off, but you can see how those particular industries themselves, if we were to focus our energy into growing those sectors of renewable energy, they could create several more jobs than oil or natural gas even could. Like even looking at Keystone XL, that's expected to create about 41,000 jobs. And by contrast, you know, Senator Ed Markey, uh, he introduced a bill um, last uh, year that it's called the American Renewable Energy and Efficiency Act. And that, if passed, would potentially create 400,000 new jobs. So why aren't we focusing our energy, uh, um, so to speak, into these kinds of programs that would actually create more and more jobs? Um, we find that the subsidies that we've been using have actually been counterproductive to this, to this idea of producing the kinds of economic benefits that renewable energy can actually solve. Because um, we find that when we subsidize these things so heavily, um, we are actually creating you know, this supply that really can't be sustained. You know, I'm sure most of us have heard of the Solyndra scandal where we have this idea of like, you know, Solyndra was basically a solar energy company that went bankrupt because you know, the government promised $535 million in loan guarantees and simply couldn't, you know, uh, cash that check, right? And we have this problem where we're making all these promises and as a result, over the time, when we find out that, you know, the government just can't supply this capital, um, it's the solar energy, it's the wind energy, it's all of these renewable sectors that end up being the losers. And in order to kind of look at this idea, we can take a look to the example of Germany, which has been kind of touted this, as this champion of renewable energy with a grit solar subsidy program. Um, but even recently, you know, Chancellor Angela Merkel has 
you know, shown her doubts about this program and people are now having to pull out in terms of these subsidies. And part of the reason is because they have these feed-in tariffs. And the way feed-in tariffs work is that it basically promises um, solar energy producers who are entering the market that they will get above the market um, price payments. So um, pe people are basically uh, guaranteed that if they produce energy and they enter the solar market, then they'll get you know, these amounts of money uh, that will help you know, offset the cost of producing. And it's clearly not cost effective if you don't have the demand to match the supply. And another problem we have with the Germany example specifically is the idea that once you kind of start providing these generous subsidies, you know, people keep coming back for more and more. And in the end, you don't have the capital to sustain that. Uh, which kind of shows how in Germany, this graph kind of exemplifies how um, these feed-in tariffs and this program has actually made solar more expensive and as a result, less attractive to consumers over time. And so kind of like talking about how we really want to tackle this problem. You know, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a public policy student and I'm really interested in different things that the government can do, how policy can help, you know, change the market in a way that creates sustainable demand. Um, one policy that we see in California, for example, is something called net metering. Um, now, the way that net metering works is that if you're an electric consumer and you have some kind of on-site generating facility, maybe you have solar panels on your house or something like that, if you're producing excess energy that's uh, more than what you actually use in a month using a renewable energy source, you can actually sell that energy back to the grid. Now, in that way, we're kind of creating um, a, de a kind of demand for we're not even just demand, we're creating supply of these renewable energy sources and incentivizing people to be more creative in the way they use energy. So, and another thing that we can take a look at is the idea of renewable portfolio standards. Now, what these um, standards do, and it's part of uh, Edward Markey's bill, is that these standards would require electric producers to have a certain percentage, maybe like 10 to 30 percent of their energy coming from renewable energy sources, which means that for you know, plants like the Ivanpah Solar Electric Generating Facility. There's actually a, it's almost like, some people call it like civil rights legislation for the renewable energy market because it actually puts in legal measures to ensure that um, solar energy has the same kind of protection and, um, you know, legal inroads that fossil fuels have enjoyed for so many years. And the other thing that we can look at in terms of government action is the idea of just revising exactly how we treat non-renewables. Because um, we spend so much money on these uh, uh, subsidies for fossil fuels already, and that for us to continue subsidizing green energy while we're also giving money to um, oil and natural gas sends a mixed message. Um, the government really needs to take a stance that kind of shows exactly where you want to go in terms of this direction. Um, what I found interesting about the last State of the Union address is that there wasn't as much of an emphasis on renewable energy as there was um, on the previous one. So. It's interesting that we, as we look at the way the government is moving, there's less and less of an emphasis and it's almost reaching a point of gradual decline. But in terms of turning it back to what we can do as you know, just regular citizens to help bring this back to the forefront, you, know, you can send a letter, write a letter to your congressman or your senator telling him about you know, this bill that Markey has brought up and encouraging them. Because it's currently in committee and according to recent political reports, has about a 1% chance of making it out of committee. But it does have the potential to really change the way our government views our renewable energy. And even when it comes to you know, the utilities that you use, looking for different energy sources that, you know, for example, there are different ports, parts like green power installation companies that you know, use kind of their own renewable portfolio standards. They aren't like federally mandated, but they've taken it upon themselves to take some of their energy from renewable sources. And using utilities like that can help you know, sustain the demand for these kinds of um, sources. So it's, you know, a really big problem, and it's not one that we can solve overnight, but as long as we have continued interest in it and are continuing to put pressure on our politicians and on different economists just to make sure that um, it comes to fruition, I do really believe that we can have a green future. Thank you.